Right, so we hear a lot from Keir Starmer and Rachel Reeves about their fiscal rules, don't we? We can't afford to renationalise anything we promise to because of the economy. Fiscal rules. We can't afford to invest in the things we'd like to because of the damage the Tories have done. Fiscal rules. And of course, people are actually lapping this up. This narrative of being responsible with the nation's finances as Rishi Sunak fails to get a grip on things, failing in his five missions, most notably the inflation, which has driven so much of our household bills up, from food to rent and mortgages. And of course, before him, Liz Truss's lettuce-length tenure in power caused much of the financial damage Sunak can't get a grip on now. So Rachel Reeves nasally pontificating about ironclad fiscal rules, barring a future Labour government, was perhaps a bit of a shrewd political move. The party that is seen as most responsible on the economy is the one that will win power after all. That is how our general elections have historically always panned out. But this vision of economic competence bears a stark resemblance to doing nothing different than the Tories are. Sunak's gangster government are tightening belts, squeezing incomes and watching all of our bills go up. Not their own, obviously. Absolutely wedded to whatever the Bank of England is saying is going to fix things. They having identified the cost of living crisis problems, not at government handling of Brexit or the red tape that's still suffocating economic growth from that, and not all the rampant profiteering by large companies and corporations, many also not paying the requisite tax, which would, of course, help get inflation down too. But instead, blaming all of us for wanting enough to live on. How dare we? We have to stop being greedy and asking for more money so we can keep a roof over our heads and food in our bellies. Apparently, that is irresponsible now. The Bank of England governor is, of course, on half a million quid a year. What would he know of struggling? Labour under Starmer and Reeves have said they wouldn't question the Bank of England's advice any more than the Tories would. So an economy run by them wouldn't look much different to the one we're seeing now, because it was made all the worse because of those fiscal rules. Reeves and her fiscal rules are completely arbitrary, completely made up. They have no basis in economic fact. They are little more than a soundbite. And the more she and Starmer talk of fiscal rules and in interviews, the more the question has come up. Well, what are your fiscal rules then? Explain them to us. How many fiscal rules are there? How did you arrive at them? In what way will the, they fix the economy and end the cost of living crisis? The Tories keep tightening the nation's belt. Are your fiscal rules just tightening things another notch? And who's going to be paying that? And if it's the working class again, how will they afford it? Well, finally, this question was put to Rachel Reeves. What are your fiscal rules? And well, as it turns out, they're absolute nonsense. According to Reeves, fiscal rule number one is that day-to-day -day spending would be paid for via general taxation. And rule number two is to get the debt down. That's it. No more detail. Borrowing will only happen in order to invest. But given all Labour have said of their next government is what they won't be doing, what they can't afford to do, what they wanted to do, but... Sorry, can't do it now. It's hard to say what they will actually be ending up doing. Now, nobody is arguing the Tories' economic competence record is totally undeserved, but so is Reeves. Supposedly, she's an economist. Supposedly, she has a master's in economics from the London School of Economics. She used to work for the Bank of England. So why does her education not match the drivel she's been spouting here? She won't interfere with the decisions of the Bank of England. Oh, they're independent. We can't touch them. OK, fine. You could still say that they're wrong because wage rises blatantly aren't driving inflation because inflation has meant everyone has had a real terms pay cut. Dead easy, but no, you're on the side of wealthy windbag getting it wrong and hurting all of us with his incessant interest rate rises. But let's get into what she's saying in her rules here, because she really is talking tripe. We print our own money in the UK. I've said this in numerous videos before. We're a sovereign fiat nation, meaning we fully control our own currency and can therefore produce as much of it as we like. We can never, ever actually run out of money. So for all the talk over the years of bankrupting the nation, it is rubbish. And everybody who's ever said that is talking drivel because it is impossible for the UK to go bankrupt. Of course, the caveat is the more new money we create, the more that will drive inflation. So for all the new money we might create to pay for stuff, because ultimately we pay for everything by printing new money, we have to destroy money too, to stop inflation rising even higher and higher. And that's why we have taxation. That is what taxation does. It destroys money. Rachel Reeves is telling us day-to-day -day spending will be paid for by taxation, her first fiscal rule. But it's a big fat lie, because taxation doesn't pay for anything. If it did, we'd see instances of having to wait until taxes are collected to be able to pay for stuff. 
More military stuff in Ukra for Ukraine? No. We're having to wait for the Sheriff of Nottingham to go and do his rounds to pay for that. Let's hope Robin Hood doesn't show up and nick it all, that blasted Putin apologist. It's nonsense. Our economy simply doesn't work like that in this day and age. If we wanted to go to war tomorrow, do you think the money wouldn't be there? Of course it would. They'd print it to make sure it was. Put money for teachers or nurses? No, we can't afford that. Fiscal rules. So she's lying about the purpose of taxation. With her education, I can't believe for one minute she doesn't know better. But this is politics, and honesty isn't a politician's typical stock in trade. It should also expose another revelation to you all in that if we can never run out of money, then we can never not afford to fund our public services properly and pay people what they are worth to stay in the profession too. Every bit of underfunding we see, every refusal to negotiate over pay that we hear about is a political choice. They can pay it if they wanted to. They'll have to tax people more to stop inflation rising if they do. So the question then becomes about tax. Of course, the Tories obsess over lower taxes. It means they can't pay for stuff and underfund to meet their ideology and not the interests of the country. But wealth is a huge untaxed revenue source in and of itself. We don't tax wealth itself. And when so much of the nation's wealth is hoarded at the top, as rich as this country is, it's all at the top. And with inequality rampant with it, constantly hitting wage earners instead of that wealth at the top is unfair taxation. We can afford to pay for whatever we need if the tax taken comes from the right places. But Rachel Reeves and her fiscal rules, her belt and tightening, it shows the wealthy have nothing to fear from her. Little Miss Tougher than the Tories on benefits will likely hit those sort of people all over again. There was a reason the Corbyn leadership promised to renationalise this, that and the other, rebuild public services and all the rest of the promises he made that many argued were too good to be true. He could do it and balance the books at the same time because he would have taxed the rich. The amount of wealth the rich are actually sat on is crazy. Any government saying we can't afford to fix things just isn't going to do what he was going to. Quite plain and simple. The other vague fiscal rule was to get the debt down. And by debt, we're talking the national debt again. Ye gods, another lie. The national debt isn't a debt at all. It's a horrible name implying it's something that needs paying down like household debts do, but it's nothing of the sort. The national debt is simply the sum of all the national savings and investment accounts, the pension fund bonds, a load of money the government borrowed from itself, already repaying it on exceedingly favourable terms, as you can imagine they would if you were your own lender, and the sum total of all the notes and coins in circulation that we use and spend every day. So pray tell, how do you reduce that? The money the government owes itself is quantitative easing that's been done to try and stimulate the economy because, God forbid, you pay people more so they spend more because that is what truly grows an economy, economic activity. But we might all stop being cowed and miserable if they did that, so that'll never do. Better to just print money and have the government buy it up instead. Idiocy. Anyway, how else would you reduce it? Take notes and coins out of circulation, raid pension pots, raid savings? It's nonsense. It makes no economic sense. It isn't really a debt when all we do, well, all it is is something we owe to ourselves. It's just distraction. It doesn't need paying down. So there's Rachel Ree's fiscal rules for you folks. They're drivel. Meaningless word sound to make you think Labour would do something different when actually it sounds more like austerity 2.0. Thanks for watching. I hope you appreciated the vid and found it useful. Please do like, share and subscribe for more if you did. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation for you. Stick with the channel a little bit longer where the familiarity of Rachel Reeves' views when compared to what the Tories have done might be explained a little bit more when you consider she was back for the Chancellor job back in January by none other than George Osborne, the architect of Austerity 1.0. And I'll catch you on the next video, I hope. Cheers, folks.